nice to meet you, bro. Nice to, you know what I'm saying, finally sit you down. You know what I'm saying? I've been telling you, you know, I want to do the interview for a while. Definitely. Yeah, thought she was coming to Chicago, but shit, hey, we here. Me and Jersey, man. Yeah, fuck prison. We made it happen. Yeah, fuck prison store, we made it happen. So, um, first and foremost, man, a lot of people don't know street legend, Jersey legend, like, tri, what, is it, what do they call it, Tri-City or Tri-whatever, legend. Like, a lot of people yeah. in, in New York and Jersey, everybody know you. Um, let the people know, man, who is uh, Sean Hartwell? Well, uh, Sean Hartwell, you know, um, you know, from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, that's where I'm from. Uh, you know, I got in the streets when I was about 14, 15 years old, a drug trade. Um, you know, I was with a crew called Epoch Posse. We call Epoch Posse because we're from Elizabeth Port, and Elizabeth has a port, a dock, but the projects are called Pioneer Homes. You know what I'm saying? So, so they call it Epoch Posse because of the area we're from. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a port. Um, you know, I got a drug trade pretty young, and I started selling a lot of drugs. And by the time I turned 18, um, and they gave me an 848 CCE, which is a kingpin. So it was like a, almost like a juvenile kingpin. Because I was like, a, my case covered, I was a juvenile, and I just turned 18. So I was one of the first ones going in for a juvenile king, <coughs> kingpin. They gave me 20, I cut, they gave me two, 23 years. So I went, I, done, I, I left when I was 18, 19, 89. And I came home 09. <coughs> done 20 years straight. I got back to the streets. On the way home, you know what I'm saying? I met a lot of brothers in jail for a lot of time. A lot, a lot of brothers in jail, young, and they never come home. You know what I'm saying? So the old timers is always tell me when you go home, you know what I'm saying? Don't come back. You know what I'm saying? They, they're going to be waiting for you. They're going to be, they, you know what I'm saying? They're going to want to bring you back in here. You know, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So you're going home from jail. Like sometimes with jail people, we, we don't like to take, we take advice when we get in jail, but we don't like to take advice when we get on the street. So they would give me so much advice. That when I got to the streets, I, I developed a program that I wanted to call them to do parties. So now, all my friends was like, yo, look, like, I know you come back and go home to the game, nigga. I know you come oh, and sell drugs. Come back and get back in. So I'm like, I'm doing parties. They, they laughed at me because I was playing. But I, you know, so I had a vision, you know what I'm saying, that if I, if I market myself, I brand myself, that one day, you know what I'm saying, I might do a movie, one day I could do a dope book, one day I could do a dope, you know, play. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is one of my theories in my mind. Then one day I could just, you know what I'm saying, catch a, catch a big check. Now every hustler thinks like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it could be from selling drugs, selling water, there's something. You think like one day you're going to catch a big check, you're going to create a big check for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, if I could do that positive, negative, one day if I give them my all, marketing-wise, I might stumble on a check one day. So I started doing parties and parties, running around, promoting myself like I'm a rapper, all my parties, doing photo shoots, you know, cover magazines. And what my mind was saying, one day this going to come out to be a big check for me. Let me just be patient. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So some days, you know, I had no gas in my car. Sometimes things was rough. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? I gave a big party. I didn't make no money. You know what I'm saying? So it was a, it was a bittersweet situation. But my mind kept saying, one day I'm going to cash out. And I still believe that. One day I'm going to cash out. Yeah, it, looked like, it looked like, I mean, fuck prison to me. Just ch not trying to jump too far forward. But, um... Cause I want to talk to you about Jersey, but let's just talk about fuck prison. Like a lot of a lot, you're right. A lot of hustlers had that feeling. Like man, one day I'm gonna hit that one. But every every. I'm, gonna take off. I'm, 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 I'm making plays trying to hit that. Yeah, one. That's that, and that's that's just, that's that's just the gamble of life. So let's talk saying. about fuck prison, man. Cause I feel like it's been the one. But see, but see, you know, and this 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 this, this what comes with humbleness. And this what comes with understanding blessings. I really didn't believe, like, I'm like, I'm like, damn, well, fuck prison. It's just like, you know, me just selling church or bringing awareness. So when you look at it, like, no, I hit rock bottom because I didn't make, I hit it big because I changed people's life. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about hitting it big money-wise. I'm thinking, I'm looking for the, the, I'm saying, the gold, like, you know, say over the way, bro, the, the, the bucket of gold right there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking for this, 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 the, all this money to come in, this bucket of gold. But I hit, I hit gold already. Right. For me, when I hit it, when I when I when I develop a business that can change someone's life, I got rich in blessings. Mm -hmm. So you don't see when you make money all your life and you chasing that golden eight, you forget about you're supposed to be chasing the blessings, you're supposed to be chasing the things that gonna make you live forever, the things that when you live it, when you die, you know what I'm saying, you can't buy, money can't buy. So I, I hit gold, I hit gold when I hit it big, which I was chasing something big. I thought I was chasing money, but all the time I was chasing 
something that'll make me live, make me live forever. Right. That's a blessing. Right. Help other people, change people's lives, save people. You know what I'm saying? Make a motherfucker say, I don't want to kill somebody. Make a motherfucker scream out, fuck prison. Make a motherfucker say, I want to go back to prison. I developed that. Make a motherfucker say, walk home. They walk out of prison. For me, like I walked out of prison, they wear my clothes. Right. And that's the ice change the mindset of the person the day he walk out of prison, say, fuck prison. So now, I'm looking for money, and I already hit it big. Right. For me, I hit it big already. Like, I can't lose. Right. I like but if, if, I never, if I never sell another shirt again in my life, if I never, you know what I'm saying, um, make more money in my life, if I die today, right now, you know what I'm saying, i am already got my blessings. I, when I get to the Golden Gate, and, 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 and they say there's a gate, you got to talk to God, right? Mm-hmm. Just say that. We don't know. Just say that. He going to say, a person in front of me, what you do? Oh, you know, we, we know I gave you a gift. I gave you the gift to help people. What did you do? For me, like, you know, well, well you know, you might be a person that's Muslim in front of me or somebody that's really dean or somebody, they're going to say, I know I'm going in there because this guy behind me, he sold drugs. This guy behind me, I know, I know I'm going because this guy done everything under the ground. Then I get to the joint and he says, uh, you know, you was dealt with a fucked up hand. Right. Right? You never had a father. Your mother was your mother was on drugs. Remember, you went to prison for twenty years. Your son came home went to prison. You tried to change people's lives. Remember? Now, now he, he, he see the blessing. He gonna say you can go. You didn't talk about people. You didn't try to bring people down. You didn't try to snake people. He was in the game. He was in the dirty game. Right. You didn't you, you, you didn't cross none of your friends. Right. You can go to the gate. You made it. You went through all that, went through hell and back. Damn, they went to commit commit suicide. Damn, they lost your mind. You came home and made a difference in your community. You made a difference in the world. You can go. That now the group behind me might get them and say, "Nah, see, you was the one backbiting, talking about people, and you know the blessings. You knew the teachings. Mm-hmm. He didn't even know the teachings, but he lived by the teachings. Mm-hmm. But help other people, uplift other people, move other people, and they people don't understand that. That's a different level right there. That's that I'm dope. going on right there." So talking about the world that we that we was living in, man, tell me about the world like growing up in Jersey, like in the eighties, just like how it was, just like a daily. But you know, you remember, you, you, got, you remember the eighties was different. Like, don't you know? Yeah, remember, we talking about 87, 88, The whole world, I tell it, and I tell people was getting money. Let's get this clarified. I wasn't just getting no money. Boys and dudes in Jersey getting no money. They was getting money in Chicago like that. They was getting money in in um, Detroit like that. It was getting money in Ohio like that. It was young millionaires around the globe. Milwaukee, you know what I mean? We was young millionaires around the globe. Not just here. We, we, talk, we, we can talk about the five point star. We young millionaires in the Chicago that live by the phone. But we're talking about young from 80, 78 millionaires around the whole world. It was a new renaissance. They never sent so many young people with money back then. When they were saying to the point, it's like, they said, we got to get these niggas off the streets. Yeah, something's going on. So they come up with a law. Call, we've been saying now they Ben had this law for the Italians. We could racketeering. We're gonna get them. We, we put them in the projects, give them all the case, bring 40, 50 of them in off this law right here, and they can't even do nothing. They don't even need no drugs to bring them in. You know what I mean? So they slumped all of us worldwide. Give us all her asshole full of time and said, nigga, make it back. You know what I mean? So next, what happened to the community? You got, you got, you got baby mothers don't have fathers, and the community is depressed now. From the community, if you have a father, you don't know how to raise a man. How can a man, how can a female raise a man? It's impossible. So now, what I stand on today, my son coming home, I stand on the day to show I'm a father. I fucked up. I made some bad decisions. I, I would deal with the fucked up hand. But I'm here today at 49 years old to help my son. Even though, good or bad, what do he do? My job is to help him make him a man. You know I me? Mean? That's my job today. You know what I'm saying? So today you see me on Instagram, they say your son motivated. Now my son gave me love, but my son reminded me that I have to be a man and motivate him. So he could be a man and move other men. And it's a tr- and it trickles on down. It balances on down of life. You know what I'm saying? So it's not gonna be easy for none of us. But we gotta take a position. Either gonna be street niggas or we're gonna be men. But I mean, we gotta pick a side at one time in your life. You ain't gotta pick it yet. You still got your gun on, you still tote, still riding, but it's gonna come a time in your life. We're going to pick a decision. We're going to say, I want to be a man. I want blessings. I don't want money. Right. I'm, I'm cool with just what I'm getting in life. I'm cool with the, the element of life. I'm cool with I'm going to be in life. And that's going to make you grow. I will grow into a whole other person. Man, okay. 
So, speaking of that, man, when you first come home, man, I know you went in when you was, what, like 17, 18, something like that? Was it like 17, 18 you went in? Um, I went in. He got delivered. You come in, bro. Come on. Come on, come on. You know we close at 8. <laughs> Say hey, this is what bosses do. Come on in, bro. Go ahead. Get his delivery in the middle of the interview and shit. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. All right, bro. Thank you. Good day. You too. You're welcome. Yeah, that was nice right there. You know what I'm saying? Hey, your food. All right, so after 20 years, you come home. Like, tell me how that was, bro. Like, seeing. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't. I really didn't. You know, I had a cell phone in there, so I wasn't too much off beat. Okay. I mean, a lot of dudes. I'm saying, you know, I already had a plan. I had a cell phone, and I had a vision. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when I had that vision, everything was gonna be easier for me. So it was really like smooth. You was ready for it. Yes. When you come over, Gio, you just you really is just really the support. Had a good support team. You need a good support team to help you balance life out. Life out. But other than that, you're making. You know what I'm saying? You got to want to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfucker can't come out here and tell my yo, they got to want to make it. Right. Number one rule would do is come home from jail. And, 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 it, and it, it hurts a lot of people. They don't want to listen. They think they got it all answers. I was like that. I mean, when you catch the ones that listen, you can tell the difference. He listens. Like you took Wallow, he listened. Wallow, Wallow took off to come home. No, 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 no. He listened to Gilly. Yeah. He listened. You know I'm coming from? You see the results yeah. of listening. So listening is very important. We come over in prison because we don't want to listen. We read a few books. We got a few things. We a scholar. We know a few things. Bust a few moves. Feel good. But just wait. We don't want to listen. Right. You know I mean? And listen is very important. Listen is better. Listen is very more important than talking. Because if you listen long enough, you're going to figure out what to do. You listen long enough, the person going to tell you anything about them. You listen long enough, you're going to know which way to go. But if you talk, you can't, you can't figure out which way to go. How? You lost. Man, that's real. So was that kind of your motivation behind who the fuck want to go to prison? No, my motivation for going to prison was like one of my friends told me he got a problem going back to jail. And I told him, nigga, you must be crazy. <laughs> who the fuck want to go to prison? Yeah, so it was a joke. Yeah. And... The joke turned into, let me, let me make a page. This ain't nothing I designed. Right. And like I came over and said, yo, listen, I, 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 I was in jail. I can make it sound fancy if y'all want me to, but I didn't design this shit. This was, the, this was nowhere in my thoughts. Right. I'm making shirts and, and, and doing a movement that can help other people. That was never in my thoughts. So when I done it, I went to, um, I created a page. I just do, started doing videos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just to create it. And then from then, I went to LA and you know, I went to, to Complex Comp. I see Emery, which is Jay Z's friend. That's my, that was my man in jail. My bunkie, you know, real cool with me. I see him. We at the end, you know what I'm saying? We talk, we at the Puma things. He's like, come on, let's go see Pusha T. It's me, him, Pusha T, and Roddy Rich. And at this time, Roddy Rich is on his ride. Right. He walk into Pusha T office. But he says, yo, Roddy Rich, you're the next one. I got the video. You're the next one. You that you that new heat, you that new monster in the streets. Pusha T said that, called him, and then said, "Yo, I like that shirt you got on." I said, "Thank, bro, fam, you got a dope shirt." Really, I just made the shirt. I, I don't know how to make it. Somebody just made it for me. Mm -hmm. So we take a picture. He posts the picture. People hit me in the DM. Yo, I like that shirt. So I said, you know, I'm, I heard somebody was talking one day. You know, I'm in fashion, it's no, it's no high or low. You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no, there's no uh, such thing as low. You either go high or low. So I said, 40 for the t-shirt, 60 for 40. What's your cash at? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Okay. So the money been making long story short. I had like seven, eight hundred dollars people in cash at money. Nor did I make this shirt, nor do I go, we don't know where to get the shit from. <laughs> you got the bridge, I got the Brizzy. I got like another 40 days I got to do in Cali. So I'm like, damn. So I call my man that tells me to get the business. He's like, yo, I'm going to do a, a store called, called Shopify. I'm like, word. What is that? He set it up. And he, I'm Googling. I'm reading shit from 40 days. I'm going to figure out how to use it. When I get back to Jersey. I go, I go to the dude that made the shirt. He said, I'm going to teach you how to make the shirt. 
go get this, go to New York City, get these t-shirts, go do this, go do that, go do that. I just made the company up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then it just took yeah, off from there. Go. From organically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 like so now I gotta say to myself, who why why did I get this gift? Because I didn't it ain't like I designed it. And like I sat back and said, okay, yo, I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna sell this right here. I'm gonna come up with this, this clothing line. I didn't I didn't think about selling a shirt that a day in my life. One day I just done it and it went. So, so that's so that's another blessing I was telling you about. So right now, bro, it seems like fuck prison, you know, the clothing line is like it seems like it's like the clothing line for police, you know what I'm saying, brutality and prison reform and all that. Like you seeing a lot of the um a lot when Jamie Foxx wore it. Jamie Foxx wore it, I mean, you know, I gave it to Jamie Foxx seven months ago. And he just he put it on like for the for right now. It was yeah. an accident. He put it on and put it on his YouTube page and spoke about, you know, saying George Floyd. And I and I told someone, I said, you know, I'm not looking at him wearing it. I'm looking at the process that he holded it for seven months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kept it. With he kept it. All the stuff in his closet. All the shit that this man got. So he that, kept a fuck prison hoodie in his closet. That means that, you know, some might don't see the value of it yet. But some people see the value of it. Because, you know, sometimes you might see gold and think it's unvaluable. Mm-hmm. And later on, somebody tell you that it has value to it. Sometimes you may see a female and you think she has no value to it. Then later on, she gets somebody else and say, yo, you never saw her value. You know coming from? And people don't see the value into what, you know, uh, what fuck present is. Now, like, years from now, I may be gone, dead, off this earth. You know what I'm saying? Somebody going to say, yo, that's a valuable company now. Right. But it might, it might time, take time to get there. 